Hello and welcome to our uh, midweek Bible study coming up on the sixth Sunday of Epiphany 2022. And um, welcome. So uh, thank you all for your prayers. I've, uh, I've <clears throat> been more over 10 days now. I've been assured by a nurse that I am not contagious, even though I may have a little lingering um, cough, you know, I, I know, uh, my, my, I sound a little different, I got a little, I was coughing pretty good a couple weeks ago, so my throat's still recovering a little bit from that, but, um, but thank you all for your prayers, and Tanya does not have, uh, COVID either, so we are, we are a clean house again, so thank you very much. Our, um, so on to our readings for this sixth Sunday, here you see the intro it. Psalm 119, skipping around a little bit. The antiphone verse is verse 7, and then uh, verses 1 and 2, 4 and 5. So, I praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. And then the call of the day, let us pray. O oh Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people that we, who justly suffer the consequence of our sin, may be mercifully delivered <clears throat> by your goodness to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will uh, start in our gospel lesson in uh, Luke 6, uh, 17 through 26. So this is picking up after Jesus has done some healing. Um, he's called the 12 disciples by name. So we've skipped a little bit from where we left off on Sunday and uh, into this next week. But um, all right, 17 through 26. <clears throat> Jesus came down with them, down from the mountain with the 12, and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured, and all the crowd sought to touch him, for power came out of him and healed them all. So the, the stories are getting around the news of what he's been doing, and... Um, People are start, really, the ministry is really picking up, which is why Jesus had just finished appointing the 12. Uh, last week we had read about the, um, yeah. we had read about the uh, fishermen. And, and so we've, we called the fishermen first, and then we uh, called all the rest of the 12 uh, and named them. And now, and now things are really busy. Crowds all around. Jesus yeah, needs some help controlling things and um, and teaching these men who are going to be the leaders of the new church uh, after his death and resurrection. So after his ascension. Um, so now we get to the the beatitudes and uh, the Matthew five uh, is the more popular, well known place where we read and study these. But here is Luke's version of them. They'll be very similar. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when you exclude the, you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, 
for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all people speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. So, these are similar. Uh, I didn't look at Matthew directly. I could flip there real quickly, but uh, I don't think Matthew includes the woes, at least not so quickly. Real quick, looking here. Blessed, blessed. Yeah, you are the salt of the earth and light. Um, <clears throat> so Luke uh, does that just a little different with the woes. Certainly in Matthew, Jesus also uh, gives warning. Woe to the rich and uh, so those. But um, So, blessed are you who are poor. Blessed are you who are hungry now. Blessed are weep now. Now this doesn't mean, this isn't, this is how you get blessed by fasting, by by not eating, by giving away all your money, or by not working, or you know, um, by um, being poor, uh, by weeping. Now certainly weeping, uh, even unbelievers weep and grieve and mourn, but isn't it interesting how even in death, they try not to weep, uh, try not to mourn, or, or even don't, don't mourn for me, you know, uh, don't grieve for me when I'm gone, right? Uh, there is a, a loss. There, death is not how God intended this world to be. And so even Jesus wept at the death of his loved ones, friends and family. And so it's, it's, it's okay for us to weep with God for the, for the death of our loved ones. But this is not how we earn our way to be blessed. We are blessed now because we weep with God. We hunger now maybe for food, or maybe for righteousness, maybe for, for God's kingdom to, to be fulfilled. Um, Christians may be rich people, not necessarily just poor, but, uh, but poor in this worldly sense. Christians are mocked in, in, on TV. Uh, they have been for a long time. Uh, not just recently, even uh, as, I've, as I've shared in the past, the network TVs did not want to let Charles Schultz share the actual biblical Christmas story on, in his Charlie Brown Christmas, even in the 1960s when he wrote that program. So Christians are seen as poor and not strong, self-sufficient people. Um, blessed are you when people hate you. That's kind of building you know, all of these things together. Exclude you, revile you, spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. When we are persecuted for being believers, Christians, little Christ. Uh, when we acknowledge that we are little Christ, we, his name is on us. Some people in this world will uh, exclude, revile, spurn. And most of the people on, in the major news networks, uh, on the TVs, do not know, do not experience, do not ha have any idea what Christians, who they are, or what they, what the, who they are, what they do, or what they believe. So they, they, um, it's awkward oftentimes when they have Christians on TV, and when it should just be, uh, it, we would like to see, we are the natural, we are the normal, uh, but they are often not portrayed that way. Woe to you who are rich. Woe to you who are full now. Woe to you who laugh now. Again, this is not... We should be warned a little bit because, especially in our country, in the United States, we are rich. We are full of food. Um, as someone who works at the food bank, uh, some of our food that we try to give away, even the hungry people in our country do not want. Uh, so... Um, those who laugh now, um, no, he's not saying that we can't can't laugh, can't tell some jokes, can't have some fun, but uh, we can't fill our lives with those, you know, um, to the exclusion of the reality, uh, uh, to the exclusion of God in our lives, to the exclusion of that the of that of acknowledging our sin, uh, repentance, and. Um, the things that we as Christians should normally be doing daily or weekly. So, um, 
but uh, woe to you when all people speak well of you. Which is an interesting, interesting spot because there's also uh, uh, there's also the warning that we should behave as Christians so well that even when they revile us, they they have to speak well of us. Um, in the um, in the epistles, there's that that we should we should behave not in the way that the world said, well they did it so I can behave this way. No, we should behave so well that they are embarrassed, even though they are trying to make fun of us. Uh, you know, so. That the, the, the truth and the light shall shine forth. So, um, well, we spend more time on the Beatitudes uh, for the um, All Saints Day. That's, and that's where we read them from Matthew every, every year. So, but uh, anyways, again, we are blessed because we are in a relationship with God. Not because we do or don't do these things in ourselves and when we are in a relationship with God then we are hungry for him to come and to experience life with him more fully so we are we are disappointed with the sinfulness and the brokenness of this world but we can still laugh a little bit we can still enjoy some good food um, we can have riches but we should be sharing them and giving them away and helping others and not just adding them up for ourselves for our own good so then turning from there to the Old Testament lesson Jeremiah 17 verses 5 through 8 this is in a section if you have your Bibles open uh, chapter 17 might say the sin of Judah so this is a warning to Judah as the Beatitudes are a bit of a warning to those who are self-righteous as I said, not in a relationship with God. So, 5 through 8. Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert. He shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the, of the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. <clears throat> Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Uh, he is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green. He is not anxious in the year of drought, for he does not cease to bear fruit. So, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. Well, I think... We have a bit of a time of warning in that. In this midst of our crisis, our pandemic, our COVID, uh, do we turn to works of men, that is medicines and uh, masks and uh, things to, for our strength, or do we look to God for our salvation? Now, I... I just came, just recovering from COVID. I don't know how I got it. I was not at a party. I was not running around with my mask off. Uh, even at the grocery store, I uh, had have not done anything different than I did for the last almost two years. Um, we, um, so I don't know where I got it from. But uh, so we're, the, the, whether you get the shots we take the medicine, the precautions you take, you know, the wisdom comes from the Lord to use those the knowledge that he has given to man. But our trust is in the Lord, not in humans and human knowledge, wisdom, uh, sometimes not, not just science, not, uh, but scientism. The trust in science as a religion beyond what it should be to answer questions beyond reality about about um, eternal life and the things that God has told us are true so uh, how does God through Jeremiah describe this man like a shrub in the desert shall not see any good come now we especially in our neighborhood here live in a bit in a pretty much a desert uh, not in Arizona not in Utah, Nevada, though they are a bit more extreme desert than we are, but we only get 
10 or 11 inches of rain a year. We have uh, some small cactus. It's not uncommon to find them. Um, sagebrush and, and bitter brush. Um, and they don't grow very big, except for where there's water <laughs> around the lakes and streams and springs uh, where there's water. That's where you find the trees. It's pretty obvious here compared to the Midwest or other parts of the mountains where there's trees everywhere. Um, that that uh, you you can't tell just by looking where the water is. Uh, here in our neighborhood, you can tell where the water is by where the trees are. It becomes obvious. Um, dwell in the parched lands of the wilderness, an uninhabited salt land, and I particularly think of the Utah salt flats, right, or California, some in the Great Basin area, some of the salt flats there. There is nothing growing there. It is just salt. It's so, it's, it's just it, it's too much salt that, that um, no plants can grow. And uh, they have similar areas near the promised land too. So they're familiar with that, the Negev area into Africa. So uh, that, that is, uh, when we put our trust in men, we have no water, no substance, no uh, root. We have no hope to grow into anything bigger. We are stuck surviving in a, in a barren, barren time, barren land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. Uh, the Lord gives us faith. Uh, the Lord, it, faith is trusting in Him. So He is our trust and the one who we trust in. Um, he, he, this man, is a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. Does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green. Is not anxious in the year of drought. Does not cease to bear fruit. Yes, um, we know... Uh, we experience this when we have dry years and um, we can see where the water is natural and the and the trees don't suffer much versus where it's it's watered unnaturally um, irrigation and you might have to turn it off because there's not enough water and um, and it suffers uh, so um, so trust in the Lord and you will be blessed. Not be, uh, and the, you remember that your trust itself comes from the Lord. Then, turning from there to our epistle lesson. Uh, now, First Corinthians. We've been reading through Corinthians. And um, we were talking about spiritual gifts. And we've pretty much wrapped up the spiritual gifts last week. The... Um, Chapter 15 that we're reading now. Now, um, I'm going to start a little sooner. We, uh, we're assigned here to start on verse 12, but, um, but I'll start reading at verse 11, 1 because it first part builds into the second. Now, I remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. So, here's the gospel. In the nutshell, he, he's going to tell us, right? So hold on to this, he's saying. If you have faith, if, um, he'll go on to say, if, if, if this is not true, then we're all in trouble. Then all of our faith is in vain, even what I believe. But, um, but here it is. You know, this is the essence. I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried. He was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. The, uh, so this is, this is pretty similar to our Apostles' Creed, isn't it? Uh, almost, uh, in some, almost word for word. I'm sure that's part of where it's based on. Paul, the Apostle, his confession of the gospel of Jesus. Buried, raised on the third day. He appeared to Cephas, that's Peter. And then to the twelve, so Peter was at the tomb, uh, the twelve were in the upper room. Uh, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time. 
we don't um we don't have that account exactly in the in the any of the gospels but um but we know he was around for 40 days before his ascension so he could have uh 500 of them met meeting somewhere at some point he could have appeared to all of them um well i paul says he did um, some have fallen asleep, some have died, passed on, but we know that death is not the end. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. La, uh, James, probably uh, his brother James, who became an important leader in the church, who had not been one of his disciples, but uh, who we th believe wrote the book of James. Um, so this is a little different James, not the James brother of John, who was also a fisherman, who had been with Jesus the whole time, but probably his brother James, to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. When? Well, particularly on the road to Damascus, Jesus appeared. Right, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? So, um, it's uh, not ex exactly the the same as before his ascension, but uh, he did appear to Saul, later Paul. I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. I'm sure it's one of those things that Paul never forgot. Uh, and yet, like a, like a sometimes like a uh, an addict who has been set free, more fully appreciates the enslaving power of sin and the freeing power of faith in Christ. Um, some of us who have always lived a life of faith uh, don't appreciate that quite the same way. So maybe Paul, as a persecutor, appreciated this even more so than some of the other you know, leaders of the church. But um, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But on the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, Though it was not I, but the grace of God that was in me. God, grace, God's riches at Christ's expense. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached and so we believed. So they already were preaching. Even before they writ, written down the Gospels and the, as we know the New Testament, they were already preaching it because they knew it. They had lived it. You know, it was... It was uh, their eyewitness accounts. You know, later on they said, "Oh, we should write this down before somebody forgets." <laughs> that often happens, right? Um, something gets started, you're busy in the middle of it. You don't think, "Oh, I should write this down until later on." Like, "Ooh, we better write it down before before we lose this story." All uh, right, continuing then where our bulletin picks up, verse twelve. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? Now, certainly within our church, uh, it's hard to imagine anyone who would say there is no resurrection from the dead. But there are some people who claim to be Christians who don't believe in a resurrection of the dead. They believe in, basically, um, some other Gnostic spiritual idea that our energy goes off and we go into some spiritual heaven our souls are there but no this is christian teaching jesus rose from the dead in his body and so as this goes on uh if there is if paul says verse 13 now but if there is no resurrection of the dead then not even christ has been raised and if christ has not been raised then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain so, so it's the uh, the keystone part. You know, certainly we love Christmas that Jesus was born, but without Christ being raised, there is nothing else. He could just have been another criminal killed on a cross, as some people want to believe and try to teach. But he is not. He rose from the dead, and so all the rest of the stories help to teach us what that meant. That he is the Son of God who is saving us from sin and death and eternal damnation, that we have a promise of resurrection, our bodies also coming out of the grave, to live with him forever. Um, verse 15, we were even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not 
raised if it is true that the dead are not raised. So, so we've been lying about God. Strike me dead. Right? Um, and, you know, if, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, if he has, then that means that everyone else will have the chance too to be raised from the dead. It even talks about the unbelievers will also raise from the dead and then go into eternal uh, suffering after that from there in their bodies eternal life you know, eternally die in never fully dead but not alive <coughs> um 16 for if the dead are not raised not even christ has been raised and if christ has not been raised your faith is futile and you are still in your sins still separated from god still guilty for or for what you do uh for for your still guilty, then those who ha also have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. They're done. It's gone. Dirt sleep. No more. We, we have no hope of seeing them. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are all people most to be pitied. Now that implies that we do have hope in this life with Christ now, but also then. It's not the now or then, it's the now and then. <laughs> we have hope now because he is with us. We are blessed. We are life. We have hope. Um, and that hope is going to be fulfilled in our resurrection in the future. So, um, all right. So, uh, verse 20, here we are. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This is the essence of the gospel. This is what, you know, the bait, you know, to use. Jesus is risen from the dead, and you will also rise to live eternal life. Um, this is, uh, you know, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you so much, he's going to bring you back from the dead. And we know he's going to bring you back from the dead because he himself came back from the dead. Uh, so um, this is uh, this is the gospel in the nutshell, as as Paul would say. He he goes on some more, and, and um, let me see. Grab next week's bulletin here. Do we get one more week of this? You know, Easter is really late. Yeah, we get pick up again here, right there, next week. So um, Easter is really late this year. Sometimes we already have had. Are getting into um, Ash Wednesday and Lent, but uh, but this year it's pushed out a little bit. So so we actually get to finish reading this part of Corinthians, where a lot of years we don't do this. So Christ has been raised from the dead, uh, and uh, that's that's our promise. That's our hope. That's our assurance that uh, there is eternal life. We will also raise from the dead, not living some little clouds strumming our harp, but uh, living with God the Father in our bodies as he created us to be. The new creation, uh, restoration of the first creation that was ruined by sin, by Adam and Eve and the sin that continues to be in us. So that's um, so um, I guess then to, to, to tie this in, do not trust in men. Uh, uh, trust in the Lord. You, uh, of all the wonders of modern science, we have uh, we have spaceships go, taking private citizens with no training up into you know, the edge of space and back down, landing almost in the you know, exact same spot. We have, like we said, these shots that have protected millions of people around the world from from death, but not completely. You still die. You still catch COVID, even with the shots. Um, in, even though you're not likely to die from COVID, you're going to die from something. You're going to die from a car accident. You're going to fall, trip and fall. You're going to have a heart attack. You're going to have a stroke, um, cancer. We're all going to die of something. But Christ is our real salvation from, from death. Christ is the is our hope. Now we have hope now so we can live without fear of COVID, without of fear of the roads, fear of weather, fear of uh, disasters. We live in hope through all of those things. 
um, because we know he is risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And um, so he, um, so we live in that now and we look forward to the fulfillment of that. Uh, our trust is in the Lord, like a tree planted by streams of water. So thank you all for joining me. I'm um, a little bit shorter than normal, but that's, that's just fine uh, with me. Hopefully it is with you. And I'm glad if you have other questions, uh, go ahead and send them to me or, um, or maybe I'll see you in person. God bless. Uh, let's pray. Oh, thank you, Lord for your assurance of hope and resurrection. Thank you for blessing us, for planting us next to streams of, of living water of your word and of your spirit and keeping us alive through all the ups and downs, the disasters and, and, and of life. And um, help us to put our trust in you always and to share your blessings with those around us. And to, uh, that we have been, to see that we are blessed by you and we are a blessing for, for others. Pray all this in Jesus' name as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. See you soon.